King of Kings Takla Georgis reigned from year 1779 to 1795 This chronicle is written by Alaka Gabru in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, one God. Let us write with the help of God the Highest, and the intercession of Mary the Virgin, and by the intercession of Michael and Gabriel and the intercession of Saint George the Athlete, the story of the reign of the honored anointed, whose eyes are as the morning star, and whose countenance is shining and beneficent, whose stature is like an exalted angel, and his valor like the terrible Samson, his mind pure as the mind of the Creator, his wisdom great as the wisdom of Solomon, his dominion extensive like that of Alexander, the king of kings Takla Georgis, whose throne name was Fikr Sagad. And I believe in my mind and I declare that he was the glorious Theodoral who it was said would come in the latter days. The East was his progenitor of good works, which caused him to arise the son of justice and love. If I had to recite all the tribulations that fell to him before becoming Negus, the leaves would not contain them. Because often the governor of Juan made him come down by force, and against his will, denying him food and drink. He would not have been so afflicted by his own death, but saddened by the death of the chiefs who were in Juan, by hunger and thirst, he offered himself to death like Christ as expiation expiatory victim for all, and he came down from Juan. Then he was made to ascend again to the mountain Juan by his brother Taklahamanot. He sometimes descended in fear that they would cut off his hands and feet, and pluck out his eyes as in the time of the Negus Solomon. Then he underwent great suffering, but God who sees into the hearts of all, saw that he came down, not to seek for the kingdom but for deliverance from the afflictions we have recounted above. God preserved him as he preserved Yosef from the hands of Pharaoh and Daniel from the mouths of the lions, for he restored in his days the laws of Constantine made by the mouth of the fathers of Nicaea and built churches, and made him ascend one again with great honor and joy. Let us turn to writing the story of the reign of the king of kings Takla Georgis. In the second year of the reign of Solomon, in the month of Sain, the evangelist Lucas, year of the world 7271 after Christ, Kenfu Adam went to Juan with many chiefs and people, cutting him off Taklagiorgis from food and drink as before. He tormented him with hunger and thirst and with much contumely made him Arnegus Taklagiorgis descend. He did not make him descend with a good but an evil object, yet God changed the council of death and made it a council of rejoicing even as he changed the book of death of Baran, and caused it to be by the hands of the angel Makal the book of life and joy. After that Kenfu conducted Arnegus T. Georgis and King Solomon to the land of Damod and governor of the Agau, while his brother Adara Kalu was Dejasmic of Gojim, having taken it by his hand by force from Ras Kalu. In the month of Hamli God roused the people of Mecca and Damat, so much that they said if Taklagiorgis did not reign they would not submit, nor give tribute to King Solomon. When Kenfu saw the excitement of the people, he gave the kingdom to our King Takla Georgis in the country of Yubaba on the twelfth of the month of Hamli on the day of the feast of the glorious Archangel Street Makal and there was great rejoicing from one end of the country to the other, for all loved him from his childhood upwards and hoped that he would come to reign, as the sower hopes for rain. Besides his father loved him more than the Negus, Bis eldest son, for this he was named Fikr Sagad. This winter the Negus came to Tecusa and returned having accomplished many things. After that he dwelt without going into Gondar seven months, for Abedo Kenfu prevented him. The Negus built a church in Yubaba, under the invocation of the holy apostles, and he made great devotions of penitence, for that the Lord had made him enter the city of his fathers and his regalia royal property. In the month of Toxas the king was a child and yet a peacemaker, and brought about peace between Dejasmic Kenfu and Dejasmic Bakadu. When the Lord saw the great penitence of the Negus he softened the heart of Kenfu who made him come to Gondar the 29th of the month of Toxas, the day of the nativity of our Lord Jesus Christ. On him be praise. The people and the clergy, men and women, gave him a reception with canticles and rejoicing and that day was a new nativity. After the Negus entered his chamber after a few days he sent Solomon up to Wakabine with his wife and children, having decorated them with robes of honor. The governors went each to their respective governments. Dejasmic Kenfu went to his province decorated with gifts by the hand of the king, he and his people. This summer the Negus made Princess Enkoi Lulkum, the sister of Dejasmic Bakadu from Bagamder, to be his concubine. In Themanth of Hamley at the end of the summer, there was, on Sunday, a proclamation of appointments and dismissals. Kenfu sent to the king, saying, to do me a favor, give an appointment to Sadalu, for I have given him my daughter to wife. The Negus, on hearing this, nominated Sadalu Igabedbajrand and invested him with a robe of honor. But Sadalu is playing the traitor to the Negus and went from Kenfu. 
Adam. After this he also who was governor of the, Westu, the interior, the governor of the supplies, that is to say, the Cantiba, betrayed the Negus, and went thither, by reason of that the Negus prayed, saying, He who eats my bread has lifted his heel against me, Psalms. XLI. 9. Asahel went there also, also Maroka his friend combined with them, as the book says, is her also is joined with them, Psalms. LXE. 8. On their account the Negus prayed, saying, If my enemy hated me I had patience, Psalms. LV. 12. From this time there was enmity between the Negus and Kenfu. Kenfu sent Sadalu telling him, I give you all the territory of the Negus as far as the Kaha. Sadalu went over to Afala in the rainy season with many other warriors of Mecca. In the second year of his reign, that of the evangelist Matus, the Kanyasmic Wasan, son of the Negya's sister, went to make war against Sadalu and those that were with him, vanquished him and captured his war drums and sent him to the Negus. These then escaped severe punishment. After that the Negus departed and pitched his camp at Barahela and met Dejasmic Bakadu, he chose some warriors of Lasta, who were Kalu, Golia and Gabrayasis. The Negus returned and Dejasmic Bakadu went to his country. Then the Azai Yaikab and the Likaguba Azina wearied themselves in making peace between the Negus and Kenfu. The Negus re-entered his palace, appointed Kalu to the office of Tekachun Bladangeta and Golia to that of Balambaras and Shalaka of the Aju, and Gabrayiasis the office of Ikabet Byrond and Shalaka of Lasta. In these days Gadlu came in rebellion and encompassed Janwara, having joined Kenfu in a conspiracy, he did not understand the words of the Bible which say, Touch not my anointed, Psalms. CV. 15, and again, lift not thy hand against the anointed of the Lord, he who does so is not guiltless, 1 Samuel. XXVI. 9. The Negus, having heard of this patiently, sent a message to him, for his patience was equal to his power, saying, Henceforth return to the land which we have given thee. Gadlu, on hearing this message of the king, answered with haughty words and what was not seemly. His language was outrageous, the Negus sent a message to his servant humbly and patiently, and the servant sent a message to his lord of pride and anger. When the Negus, whose throne name was Fikr Sagad, heard this message of Gadlu, he burned like fire, and roared like a lion, the measure of his patience was his anger and he made a proclamation by herald that every one who was under his the king's command and did not follow him the next day would be no more received in audience. That said, he departed the fifth tear, on a Thursday, at the twelfth hour, at nightfall the third hour, glaring like a lamp and flashing like the sun. In such wise whom shall we liken our king Takla Georges to? We will liken him perchance to David when he sallied forth to attack Goliad the Ilafeloe Goliath the Philistine, or to Iyasuf Joshua, son of Na, when he went forth to destroy Jericho, or indeed to Theodorus when he went against the people of Cuse. But more than all of these he was then great in majesty. Let us return to the beginning of the story. Dejasmic Wasan came because the Negus had called him from the province where he had been governor. Leaving Gondar there was a raiding expedition and the Negus marched, followed by his ministers and chiefs, namely, Ras Iadar the Bladangeta Adga, the Azai Mecca, the Fidorari Salas Beria, the Lik Basilotu, the Basha Meniwab, the Kantiba Kenfu, the Nagadras Ulemtu, the Azai Zadu, the Azai Danfa. Three days after they had arrived at Gondar without repose, for he had come by order of the king, the Alaka Gabru, author of this history, with the image of the Kuarata Riasu, marching on foot because he loved his lord, and in order that this should be known he depicted, in Gondar, in the church of Baada, the oppression of him whose victim was his lord, the king of kings, Takla Hamanat, without fear of anyone, also Dejaz Makheskias, Dejaz Mak Gabru Kedan, the Lika Makwas Gabru and Azai Ikonyanwais, the Afa Negus, who with his own hands pitched the tent of the Negus on Angareb, the Byron Zena Gabriel, the Basha Valda Kedan, the Dejasmic Yamaryam Beria, the Kanyasmic Zogu, the Kantiba Kapt, the Basha Iyasu, the Kantiba Gabra Salas, the Asmic Valda Dawi, the Lagaba Atschu, the Asalafi Kalu of Agamya, the Asalafi Yabis of the Afroi Gaba, name of a corps of troops, the Azai Kidanu, the Shialak Ajagar and the Shialak Akoramtu. Of the chief justices, the Azai Zekru, the Azai Yaikab, the Azai Wadaju, the Azai Valda Rufal and all the guards of the king, who had been appointed or had been dismissed, the Lagaba Lencha, the Asalafi Nacho and sons of the nobles of Mecca and Damat, Hawi Bakafa, Wati Sanbato, Aduru Zago, Valda Kiros, Salu Maricho, Valda Georgis and many soldiers of the Negus of whom we have no mention and have not written down the names. If the names of all the followers of the Negus were written down these leaves would not contain them. 
The Gerasmic Balda Abib did not remain to stay on guard over the king's mother. The chief justices remained, and they remained by wish of the Negus. The Azai Kapt found himself in Kosoj, coming from Juan. This day the king of kings Takla Georgis, Adyam Sagad halted at Kosoj. The day following, Friday the 6th of Ter, the Negus departed in the morning, the Azai Yaikab returned by command of the Negus, the Kantiba Khanwad and Kakabalita Gabra, the Azai Matar and the Azai Wark when the king reached Angish Vladangeta Kitu received him, Balambaras Galfa and Byrond Gabra Iyasis, Salawa Gabra Maskal, the Shalaka Valda Seles with a large force of the Negus. In the evening the Negus departed and ascended the hill and saw the encampment of the rebel Gadlu and his many troops and tents and horses and guns and breastplates beyond number. The retainers of the Negus who were with him were named, Balambaras Valda Seles, Basha Dangas, Byron Dara Gabriel, Alam Daru, Akalev Warkweha, whom the rebellion had nourished like milk, the friend of war, and fearful of the rod, all these of Wagara, except Azabayos, Atschu who had followed the Negus from Gondar. And when the Negus saw these rebel soldiers, he recited the prayer of the Psalm of David which runs, O Lord, how many are they that trouble me, many are they that rise up against me. Many they be that say of my soul, Thy God will not save thee, but thou, O Lord, art my refuge, my glory and the upraiser of my head. Psalms. E. 1 3. And again he prayed, saying, Oppress them O Lord those that oppress me, and fight with them, O Lord, that fight against me, lift up a shield and spears, and arise to help me. Psalms. XXXV. 1 2. Then he passed the night at Enkosh and the following day, on the Sabbath, the seventh of Ter, the Negus started in the morning and camped at Mehertok. The Kantiba Chunwat returned, and the next day, Sunday, the eighth tear, he took repose. While their Adakyos brother of Akale came, the next day, Monday, the ninth of tear, he reposed there. Byron capped, Susenyos Nacho, the Sagaba Yaikab, Dabarak Yamaryam Beria and the sons of Fidwari Yaseles Beria and all the people of Sakalt came. Then the Negus sent a Bayatar to set fire to the house of Akale, and he set fire to it. The next day, Tuesday, the 10th of Ter the Negus started in early morning and ascended by a narrow and difficult road, the Negus and the soldiers marched on foot from daybreak to midday. Many men, mules and asses perished over the precipice. That day Fidorari Yaseles Beria and Azai Kapt marched in the rearguard. Vladengeta Kalo, Balambaras Golia and Byron Gabra Iyasis acted as Fidorari, because Fidorari Valda Aragawi had been left behind in his own province. They halted at Deradera, the next day, Wednesday, 11th of Ter, they took a rest because it was the feast of the baptism, Epiphany. Gabra Abib joined them with the tent he had captured from the men of Gadlu, and the Negus gave it for the Kur Adariasu. Gadlu turned back panic-stricken and trembling when he heard the Negus had advanced in wrath, as Solomon said, the anger of a king is as the roaring of a lion, Proverbs. XX. 2. The next day, Thursday, the 12th of Ter, the Negus started in the morning, in the guard was Byron Gabra Iyasis. They made a halt at Bantaro. The next day, Friday, the Negus departed, Vladengeta Kalo being rear guard they halted at Sarakuba, Dejasmic Wasan halted at Angarab, and with him Fidorari Yaseles Beria, Dejasmic Kidan, Lik Batsalotu, Kantiba Kenfu, Nagadaras Yalemtu, Azai Danfa, Azai Zadu, Byron Kapt halted because they had got separated on the road. The next day, the Sabbath, the 14th of Ter, the Negus started in the morning and halted at Adit. The following day, Sunday, 15th Ter, he took a rest. Korma came, and the Negus made proclamation by herald thus, The inhabitants of Sagad that dwell in the country of their fathers shall come to me, up to end of three days. But Batrios of Boza, a thieving brigand and a traitor to his oath to the Negus, did not come. The next day, Monday, the 16th of Ter, the king departed in the morning, Korma was the rearguard, much provender was captured by raid, and many were killed over the precipice. Kenfa Gabriel Yabo Beria arrived, who had left by order of the Negus, the next day, towards the close of night, Shalaka Gwangil Sarwe of the attendants of the palace went with Mach and a few soldiers in the rear of Valda Seles, Dungays, Adara Gabriel, Kefla. Adne, the Fidorari of Gadlu the rebel. They joined battle at Ashala, and Bojan was killed and many others perished with him, of the troops of the Negus Sela Amsa, Kenfu Gadlu fled first of every one, for he was seized with terror. This thing is marvelous, and very extraordinary that this man who had a mind to fight against the puissant king of power and exalted majesty, fled and was terrified beyond measure by a simple boy sergeant of the Negus. When the king heard of the defeat of Gadlu he prayed, repeating the Psalm of David 143, 
which runs, Blessed be the Lord my God which teacheth my hands to war and my fingers to fight, following it to the end. Then he halted at Samara. The next day, Tuesday, 17th of Ter, by order of the king Asalafi Yabis, Nurechu, Menuab and Abba Sahelu marched out. Then the king departed, Byron capped forming the rearguard, and halted at Tabarshesh. The next day, Wednesday, the 18th tear, the Negus started and halted at Sarkwa, and many serpents were killed, big and terrible, and leopard cubs were captured by the hands of the attendants of Danfa, he gave certain knowledge of the death of the king's enemies and their capture. Guests of the queen came that. Guests of the queen came that day, and the next Friday they arrived at the river Kaza, the rumor ran that spears of Gadlu's army had come up, and the king's troops prepared for battle. None of the men of the king loitered behind, but they said to one another, I will go first, and, I will go first, but when the river Kaza was crossed, the spears were not to be found. The Negus was wroth and burnt like a fire, saying, I will not stay here without getting to where Gadlu is. Then Ras Ayadar and Dejazmic Adga started supplicating the Negus, saying, O king, these words are not good nor fitting, let us rather remain here, till the troops have assembled together. After much praying the king consented. After that they pitched the tent and stayed there the night. Zawald and Sabuhe, to whom Gadlu had entrusted the guarding of the pass of Achalako, so that the king might not get out, arrived. The next day, the Sabbath, the twenty-first tear, the king departed and halted in Afawarg. Messengers came from the queen and Ras Kalu, and the next day, Sunday 22nd Ter, he took a rest. Monday, 23rd of Ter, the Negus left and arrived in the province of Atara. Kefla met him at Taher that day a, Wark Salal, fell and was broken. Then when the Negus heard that the rebels were fighting with one another and had been scattered like smoke he marveled and praised the Lord, and remained there. The next day, Tuesday, 24th Ter, the Negus departed and halted at, Adi Kokub. Here were found the goods of the rebels, many elephant tusks and rhinoceros horns, cushions, cooking pots and iron braziers, and carpets, and iron basins, tents, war drums, honey, butter and wine. And the next day, Wednesday, 25th tear, there was a rest. Wadbabo Gabra Bladangeta of Gadluz with a large force of guns and cuirasses, presented the Negus with the gift of guns, the sons of Matabe came that day, and from that day the house of the rebels fell weaker and the house of the Negus waxed stronger. The next day, Thursday, 26th tear, the Negus started in the morning and halted at Ad Dejazmic. There was sent there great booty, horses, cuirasses and guns, the Alaka Zina joined them at Dalshihoch. The next day, Friday, 27th tear, the Negus departed in the morning and halted at Salawa, the raiders had a fight that day with the people of the locality. The next day, the Sabbath, 28th tear, the Negus departed and reached Kavtea. A man arrived, sent by Gadlu, with this message, Pardon me and have mercy on me, O king, my lord. He did not say this in humility but in treachery. The Negus hearing this said to the messenger, Come over to the camp, there I will tell you everything. After that the Negus went over against Adana. He saw the encampment of Gadlu which was on the Amba, and he had pitched his tent on the edge of Kavtea. The Negus sent to say to Gadlu, First of all send me my war drum, and after that tell me everything. Gadlu on hearing this replied, The war drum is not here but at Berkuta. This he asserted, but the drum was in his hands for they heard the sounds when it was beaten, the man was a villain and was stupid in his villainy. That day the king halted there. Gadlu sent the Negus twenty bullocks and five sheep. The next day, Sunday, the twenty-ninth tear, the Negus summoned Dejazmic Wasan and said to him, Go and seize the springs of the river that is at the foot of the Amba as the book says, for the most important thing in war is to shut out the water from the enemy, and guard it so that the troops of Gadlu may not drink of it. That day Kefla came to Kororot. After that day Jasmik Wasan went, and on the march with his men and the Azai Wark encountered Gadlu's men in a battle and they fought, and of the followers of Gadlu there perished many, and of the people of the Negus a few were killed. The Negus, hearing of this sent to the battleground, saying, Whoever fights on this day is no servant of mine, for the Sunday is no day for fighting but for prayer. Hearing this the king's people desisted from the fight and returned to their camp. The next day, Monday, the 30th tear, the Negus issued the following proclamation, Whoever loads his horse I will give it to another, i.e. whoever starts to go away I will confiscate his horse. So saying the Negus rose and made ready for battle, and getting off his mule Abba Valda Rufo laid out his cloak, and the battle began with guns and stones. In the front was Bladengeta Kalu who was like Gedawan the Conqueror, also the Balambaras Golia who was like Yonatan Jonathan to Samuel I-22 of whom it was said, the bow of Jonathan turned not back, and was stained with the blood of the slain. 
Byrond Gabrieasis, who was like Adonan, of wondrous fame, while his head was crowned with purple, the token of his valor, Gabra and Azai Yabo Beria, all of the men of Lasta, the Yalu, Tigrines, those of Kansissa and Gimjabat, also the Dejasmic Gabra Kedan and Dejasmic Heskayas, those of Mecca and sons of Chawa nobles. The Negus was rearguard with his chiefs, Ras Ayadar, Bladengeta Adga, Lik Batsalotu, Azai Yaseles Beria, all versed in war and cunning in council. The Azai Mecca was that day like Asahel and stood solid as if a rock did not seem to him a rock nor a gun seem a gun. The battle raged, and then the Negus launched into the field of battle the chiefs who were left in the rear, the Azai Ikonyan, the Kantiba Kenfu, Nagadras Yalamtu, and Azai Zadu. From morn to midday of that day many of the men of the Negus fell dead through guns, and spears, and rocks, men of Yalu, Lasta, Tigra, Kanisa, Mecca, and sons of Chawa, many who were not killed were wounded. That day Dejasmic Wasan slew many, and the warriors Madkan Nawe, Taklu, his son, Kapt, Yabo Beria and Kenfu were like lions ahingered or thirsting wolves. Of the Gadlu's men few perished, for they would not come out of their enclosure Zariba and they fought standing in the midst of their Zariba. When the Negus saw that the combat waxed more furious he sent to the field of battle, Come to me, you will have your belly full, to Samuel. She twenty-five as David said, for at times this must be done and at another that. Is the spear forever sharp? Then the Negus returned with his chiefs, and the troops, and reached their own ground. That day the Negus neither touched food nor drank water, and spent all night praying and crying, How long wilt thou forget me, O Lord, altogether? How long wilt thou hide from me thy face? How long that I make sorrow dwell in my mind, and my heart afflict me all the day? How long shall my enemies be exalted over me? Psalms. She. 1, 2. And again he cried, Where is thy former loving kindness, O Lord, which thou swearest unto David in thy truth? Psalms. X. 49. The month of Ter came to a close. The next day, Tuesday, first of Yakadat, the people of Sadalu and Figra Makal joined the monks of Saquar. The Negus issued a proclamation of amnesty, ordering that the whole army spent all night praying and crying, How long wilt thou forget me, O Lord, altogether? How long wilt thou hide from me thy face? How long that I make sorrow dwell in my mind, and my heart afflict me all the day? How long shall my enemies be exalted over me? Psalms. She. 1, 2. And again he cried, Where is thy former loving kindness, O Lord, which thou swearest unto David in thy truth? Psalms. X. 49. The month of Ter came to a close. The next day, Tuesday, first of Yakadat, the people of Sadalu and Figra Makal joined the monks of Saquar. The Negus issued a proclamation of amnesty, ordering that the should stay on the bank of the river which was not occupied and guard it so that Gadlu's people should not drink, for the wisdom of the Negus was like the wisdom of Alexander. That day Gadlu called up a fool, Balda Makal, and sent him over to the Negus to say, Pardon me and have mercy on me, O king. That was foolishness, not cleverness. Why did he send that fool, while there were so many old monks of the monastery that he could have sent? The Negus issued a proclamation. Let all my people set up their habitations tokuls, huts and hold a market, because a halt will be made till a fitting opportunity. The next day, Wednesday, 2nd Yakadat, two men were captured of Gadlu's following who had gone out from the mountain to drink water for they were tormented with thirst the Negus gave those who took them a robe of honor. That day messengers from the queen and the inhabitants of Gondar arrived. On the 3rd Yakadat the Negus sent messengers to Gondar for necessaries and towards to Grey and near Adris. When it was midday two soldiers came who had killed some of Gadlu's men and laid down the trophies before the king who gave to one a, Chufa, and to the other a, Batawa one. Of these two soldiers one was of the guards of Valdaseles and the other of the tribe of Matabe. That day the Weechail, who had been wounded previously at Regato, died, and they buried nine of them. On the fourth Yakadat, Friday, Gadlu sent over to the king to say thus, Let the Blatanyeta Kalu and the Azai Ikonyan come over to me and we will meet at the gates of the Amba, after that I will come over to the Negus, my lord, carrying on my head the stone token of submission. I will go where my lord goes and I will give up all I possess, guns, breastplates, horses and kettle drums. The Negus bearing this sent Bladengeta Kalu and Azai Ikonyan, Gadlu came forth from the Amba with Kedia Adme, and held parley at the entrance of the Amba. Then Galu changed his tone and said, I am afraid, and I will not come to the camp but give me pardon while I stay here. This he said after having given an oath and under pain of excommunication. 
Their eyes became blind and spirit hardened because they saw not with their eyes, nor understood with their spirits, because they did not turn to me and I had no mercy on them. Isaiah v. 9, 10. This day the Azai cable went to the right part of the Amba and found the Gadlu's guard, one was killed by the hand of one of Azai cable's guard and many were made prisoners. He who was killed was named Abraham, strong and terrible like Goliath the Philistine. Arnegas gave a, Batawa, to the man who killed him. If he had had much wealth he would have given it to him, but he had no wealth in his hand, for he had left Gondar suddenly. That day messengers. From Alaka Zephra let us return to our previous matter. The Bladengeta Kalu and Azai Iconian returned and reported to the Negus that the peace had been abandoned and that Gadlu had changed his tone. The Negus knew from the first that it would not be done. This day he began the foundation of a house and set up the walls. Akandios died who had been wounded by a gunshot. The next day, the Sabbath, the fifth of Yakadet, a brave youth of the king's soldiers, having killed one of Gadlu's guards, brought the trophies cut from him and the Negus presented him with a robe of honor. On the dawn of Saturday there were loud war cries heard, and the followers of Bladengeta Kalu killed two of the servants of Gadlu, took many prisoners. And the remainder fled and returned disgraced into their amba. The men of the country came before the king bringing many gifts. The Monday, 7th Yakadet, the king sent Abba Damo towards Waldeba to bring back his retainers who had fled there for refuge in Waldeba, having taken side with Gadlu, the Negus pardoned them. Tuesday, 8th Yakadet, the Negus gave orders to the troops to guard the water that remained. This day many came from Gondar with provisions, and entered the camp. Wednesday, the 9th Yakadet, the Negus issued from his tent and went to the camp with a few men and spent the day in surveying the country. At the sixth hour messengers of the queen and Ras Kalu arrived the Negus re-entered his tent. He commanded Dejazmik Wasan and Wadbabo Gabru to go towards Berkuta and attack Gadlu's guard that were posted at the fort of the Amba. That day Bladengeta Kalu fought anew severely with Gadlu, because Gadlu had ascended the mountain to set fire to the camp, on hearing that Dejazmik Wasan was not in his camp. Then Bladengeta Kalu defeated him and killed many warriors and men cunning in war, one of these was called Dang Yadabash which means stone scorcher. Gadlu re-entered his camp humiliated, and there was great lamentation on the Amba, for Gadlu loved much the men who had been killed that day. Of the people of Bladengeta Kalu, few armed with shields and guns perished. The day after, Friday, 11th of Yakadet, Dejazmik Wasan sent to the Negus a happy messenger, announcing the defeat of the rebels. The Negus gave to the runner a, chufa, of silver and promised him much. Wadbabo Gabru came in with much booty and trophies. With him came Bladengeta Kalu. Dejazmik Wasan then entered his camp the first. Next day, the Sabbath, 12th Yakadet, the guards of Dejazmik Wasan came before the Negus to lay down the trophies. Then the trumpets were sounded, the curtain lifted which covered the Negus, and the Negus held an audience with great rejoicing. Gabra Haywat entered first of the servants of the royal household, because he had killed a valiant and terrible man, expert in battle and famous. After that all entered who had killed men and laid down the trophies before the Negus, and each one left for his camp. The Negus, on seeing this, did not allow pride to enter into his mind, and spoke not vaingloriously, but prayed in the words of the Psalm of David, O Lord, we have heard with our ears, our fathers have told us the work thou didst in their days in the days of old. Thy hand has driven out the heathen and plantedst them, thou didst afflict the people and cast them out. For they got not the land in their possession by their own arms, their arms did not save them, but thy right hand and thine arm, and the light of thy countenance because thou hadst pity on them. Thou art my king and my God, who didst command deliverance for Jacob. Through thee will we push down all our enemies, Psalms. X live, 1 to 5, and he recited it to the end. Then at the ninth hour Gadlu sent the Negus five sheep, and the next day, Sunday, 13th Yakadet, prepared the tables and gave a banquet to the monks of Waldeba. As our Lord said, on him be praise. In the Holy Gospel, when thou makest a banquet call not thy friends, thy neighbors, nor thy kinsmen, but rather invite the poor and the needy, Luke Ziv. 12. The followers of Gadlu, servants, male and female, continually descended from the Amba, and declared that they were perishing of thirst, the men and beasts that were in the Amba. The Negus, hearing this, was deeply grieved at it, for his heart was compassionate like the heart of David his father when he said, May all that be upon my enemies and adversaries who have compassed me about with hatred and have warred upon me in vain. Instead of, loving me they have made accusations against me but I have prayed, they have requited evil for good and they have hated me when I loved them, Psalms. 6. 3. Repeating the Psalm to the End. 
When it was evening the guards dispatched by the patriarch and the ekage came before the king, the Abedo Demetros and Adara Gabriel. On Monday, 14th Yakadet, De Jasmik Wasan and all the ministers came before the Negus. The Negus alone knew the reason of their coming. Many of the retainers of Gadlu came before the king. That day the 40-day fast began and the king began to hear recitals from the book on Tuesday, the 15th Yakadet, Kefla Adonai came down and had a parley with the guards of the king, in order to settle terms of peace, and then returned on to the Amba. The Negus on his part sent an embassy of mercy amnesty to Gadlu, who hearing it was exceeding rejoiced and made gifts of mules to the messengers of the king. This day the Negus had news of the death of Bladengeta Tackle, son of a sister of the Ras Makal. Wednesday, the 16th Yakadet, those who had been sent to Gadlu returned and reported to the Negus these words of Gadlu, let some one come today on behalf of the Negus and take delivery of the war drums and horses and everything that is in my hands, and I will send my wife, daughter of the king's sister. The Negus, hearing that, sent Likaba Atschu, and Gadlu loaded the beast with the kettle drum, robed himself handsomely, and went forth to send back the war drum, but one of his servants came then, by name Wad Gadab, a foe to honest dealing, and said to him, Why do you give up the war drum to the king before having an oath under pain of excommunication that he will restore you your governorship? But Kefla Adonai said, It is not fitting to thwart the Negus as has been done heretofore. About this proposal the guards of Gadlu started to fight with one another. After that Adlu said to the messengers of the king, Go and report to the Negus what you have seen, that my guards are fighting with one another about this matter. The messengers returned who were there, and announced to the Negus all that had passed, and he, hearing, said to the ministers, Be careful about guarding the water day and night until everything is cleared up. Thursday, the 17th Yakadet, the king sent a herald out to proclaim in these words, I have given Gabra Abib all the jurisdiction of his father, of the people of Gadlu, those who come in by day I will receive, but those who come in by night I will not receive. That day messengers from Ras Kalu came in, and of Malaka Sahe Robam, and announced that Ras Kalu had refused to make peace with Kenfu Adam, and had fought with Adara Kalu for the Negus. On Friday, 18th Yakadet, the king went out and spent the day surveying the country, he returned about the sixth hour. Then Arabs sent by address arrived. In the evening the guards of Dejazmik Wasan came in who had killed their men and laid the trophies before the king. On the Sabbath, 19th Yakadet, Yashalika Valda Seles and Suri Haba had a fight with the men of Gadlu, and many mighty men were killed, and many wounded, the remainder fled disgraced, the guards who had made the slaughter came and laid the trophies before the Negus. At the ninth hour the house of the Negus was completed and he made his entry into it, on the Sunday, 20th of Yakadet, Gadlu called together the monks of Waldeba, and sent to the king to sue for pardon, Lake, the brother of Gadlu, came and submitted, on Monday, 21st Yakadet, three inhabitants of Walkate, sons of, Ebea Dangle, sent to the king to say, pardon me and have mercy on me, and on the 22nd Yakadet, Tuesday, a superior 455b of Waldeba died of an illness, and more trophies of the Gadlu's guards were laid down. Wednesday, the 23rd Yakadet, the monks of Waldeba went up by order of the king to the mountain of Adama to bury their superior. Gadlu addressed them, O oh my brothers, pray for me that my lord the king may have mercy on me and pardon my crime. Thursday, 24th Yakadet, the monks of Waldeba reported to the king what Gadlu had said to them. The king on this said, As I have not failed to show mercy, today likewise let what you ask be granted. Then the monks of Waldeba went to Gadlu and reported to him what the king had said. The same day the monks of Washa came and went with them. Friday, the 25th Yakadet at the ninth hour Gadlu mounted a horse and held an orgy. On the amba with his servants, for he was drunk and bereft of his senses, as the Bible says, wine and women snatch away the reason, Ecclesiastic. 6-2, and he was a laughing stock of all the people, and monks were shocked at him. The Sabbath, 26th Yakadet, waste the Afanegus king's mouthpiece went with Wadbabo Gabru on a raiding incursion. The next day, Sunday, 27th Yakadet, Waste the Afanegus arrived with great booty and trophies which he laid before the king. Gadlu's men killed an old monk, one of the monks of Waldeba in Dalshaha, and this one they impaled, and threw his pudenda before Gadlu, who was much elated and gave a robe to the man WBO had killed him, as it seemed to him he had done a good action. As our Lord said, Whosoever killeth, you will think that he brings a sacrifice to God, St. John XVI. To that he doth God a service. Monday, 28th Yakadet, Mies Sengers from the Queen came and the friend of the King, Ross Kalu. 
The same day the Negus pronounced judgment to the monks of Dalshaha, and restored to them the lands that had been taken from them by the Chawa, as David said, do justice to the needy and the orphan, Psalms. Ixi. 3. The men of Sequar departed. Tuesday, 29th Yakutat, those came from Gondar, bringing the supplies of the king and the expedition. Dejasmic Sunu came, and addressed from the country of the Arabs with many Arabs, some of these train elephants to work and tame lions. On the Wednesday, 30th Yakutat, the men of Dalshaha left, whose land of which they had been deprived the king had restored. Adris joined the king with many Arabs, who presented the Negus with a white camel, as David said, the king of Saba, and the Arabs shall offer gifts, and all the boundaries of the earth shall adore him, Psalms. LXE.10 Here ends the month of Yakutat. On the first Magabit, a servant of the king who had been sent to Awaza arrived and reported to the king the matter about which he had been sent. Friday, second Magabit, the messengers of the queen arrived. The Sabbath, the third Magabit, there was weeping in the king's palace, for the news came of the death of Princess Hirat, daughter of Ras Goshu, and wife of Dejasmic Bagatu. Sunday, fourth Magabit, a great battle took place, at the four corners of the Amba, and the retainers of the king, who were Salawa Gabra Maskal, Dejasmic Wasan, and men of Matabe, and Lasta, killed many of the soldiers of Gadlu, of the latter few were lost. The same day Valda Aragawi was sent to Tigra. Monday, 5th Magabit, the king issued his proclamation by herald, we have given Adris his former jurisdiction. The same day Bona, who had been previously wounded, died. Tuesday, 6th Magabit, Dejasmic Wasan came into the presence of the Negus. A fire broke out in the camp and burnt the habitations of many. When it reached the spot of the picture of the Kur at Ariasu, the fire subsided. Wednesday, 7th Magabit, Ras Ayadar came before the king. Thursday, 8th Magabit, the king proclaimed by herald, we have given to the men of Yaju the country they had formerly. Friday, 9th Magabit, in early morning, Gadlu descended the Amba with five servants and fled towards Bakata. The Sabbath, 10th Magabit, the men of Matabe, Genubet and Kanisa, had a fight with the retainers of Gadlu, and laid the trophies before the king. The same day Dejasmic Wasan brought as plunder to the king seven youths of courage who bore arms. Then the rumor was spread abroad that Gadlu had fled to Burgutta. The eleventh Magabit, the Negus sent thus to speak to the men of the Amba, Come to us, for I have pardoned you. But they refused to come before the king. Monday, the twelfth Magabit, the ministers assembled in the king's house and took good counsel. Wark was sent to Begamder. Tuesday, thirteenth Magabit, Dejasmic Wasan marched towards Burgutta. Wednesday, fourteenth Magabit, the monks of Waldeba came and Washa entered before the king. Thursday, 15th Magabit, the guards of Gadlu who were in Mayega came and laid the trophies of many wild beasts before the king, the king proclaimed by herald their pardon. Friday, 16th Magabit, Dejasmic Wasan came and laid down trophies, with him came a flat cellus. The monks of Washa went towards Burgutta to bring about peace. The Sabbath, the 17th Magabit, Aphanegus Wais went towards Salawa and made a raid. Sunday, 18th Magabit, the inhabitants of Adarge came and the Aphanegus Wais returned.